So to prime this piece, I'm going to use shellac. I'm going to just apply it with some paper towels. Just rub it on. Don't worry about it being streaked. It's going to dry pretty evenly. And I love working with shellac because it works as a wonderful primer and it dries really quick. So I've been using this a lot lately in my renovations. Just get it all over your surface with the paper towel. I'm going to apply my first paint color which is green balsam and I'm going to shake up my can to get just everything nice and mixed up because it has settled and look at this pretty light mint green then I'm going to use my misting bottle it has a very fine mist which is what you need for working with chalk paint and my pretty paintbrush and I'm going to first start by moistening my surface and beginning to apply the paint and look how beautifully this color just glides onto the surface of the furniture and it just works really quickly and magically to begin adding some color here and I am going to use my paintbrush to also just cover up some of the imperfections and the nicks on the surface but really this is a base color and it's part of the aged look that we're going to be going for but I'm going to show you how you can create texture by just dabbing your paintbrush up, up and down. This is a good way to start creating some character, some elevation, and some depth. Just try different methods with your paintbrush to begin creating that character that we want. Next, I'm going to apply my second color of paint, which is a beautiful linen-like white, weathered white. And I have made this into chalk paint. Look how pretty this white is. It's just kind of like a soft off white. I'm going to use salt wash on this next step. Look at this product. It's like a powdery, chalky product that is going to mix in with the paint to create texture. So I'm going to drop about just four tablespoons of my paint onto a plate and then I'm going to take about equal parts of the powder. I'm not too worried about the measurement here. You can do more precise, but really just almost equal parts from the paint amount to the salt wash. And I'm going to mix it all really well. And this is going to create a little coarse consistency, a little bit of a coarse consistency and you're going to see some of the particles of the salt wash in there. But look how it applies. Rich in texture. This is what I love about salt wash. I'm using mainly up and down dabbing strokes to create elevation and character and age with my paintbrush and with this product, the salt wash. The salt wash is what's going to give the paint that coarse aesthetic and in the end when you add another layer when you when you finish applying it you're going to see how beautiful this salt wash paint looks on your furniture pieces it just really adds a lot of character and you can afterwards come back and sand it in parts like you can really open up the paint to distress it and show some of the undertones. I'm not going to do that with this technique, but I do have a video where I did my accent stone wall in our house and it just came out like a beautiful Tuscan wall. So I'm going to just continue applying this weathered white all over the furniture and I'm going to use it to accent details while leaving some of the green undertones below exposed. This is what the furniture looks like after the weathered white salt wash paint has been applied. Look how gorgeous and magnificent this is looking. I just love it. Now I'm going to take a high grit 400 grit sandpaper and just go over the surface to smooth things out a little bit. I am not knocking off the character, just making the surface a little bit softer. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to start applying a transfer to the front of this piece. I am looking at the pattern of this transfer to make sure before I apply it that everything 
is kind of in sync. So I recommend that you do that before you start peeling off the backing of this of your transfers. So like this, for example, needs to connect the branches here. So I'm just getting a visual right now. And once I go to apply each piece, because there are one, two, three pieces, that's the bottom of this beautiful bird transfer. And I will get the name for you soon. And then I'm going to just um, hold these up just minimally with some painters tape just so I can get a visual of where I need to really focus on applying this rub on transfer. I always suggest you do this before you actually go to work. Okay, so at least I know I have all three of the pieces um, kind of in the correct order. So that's a start. And um, that's probably a good level because I do want to cover the bottom of this piece that has a little bit of nix and a little bit of imperfection. So I might use the birds to cover that. And then I'll leave the top just a little bit of a gap here. That's okay because I'm going to do a design with paint afterwards. This transfer is called Blossom Flight. And then I've seen it done on other pieces and it's really pretty, a little whimsical and lively with all the leaves and the birds. And here is the stick that it comes with that I use to rub on the transfer. So you wanna make sure that you use your little tool. Let's see, where are we going to get started? I guess we can start at the top. So you can take off the tape. and just holding it up to kind of stay at the same level. Now it's very important that your design is level. So I'm trying to eyeball this. Don't go by your furniture because sometimes your furniture is out of alignment. Go by how the pattern looks and make sure it's pretty centered. Again, if you're going for something symmetrical, if you're not, then you can do whatever artistic creation you like. So I'm gonna take this backing off, not the whole thing yet, okay? Because once you take it off, it's gonna stick wherever you apply it. So I'm just going to try to match this up a little bit right there, where the other branch would go. Don't know if you can see that. Yeah. See where this branch goes? I'm gonna try to match that up. Right there. Okay. So we're gonna start by pushing down with our hand. Pushing, pushing, pushing. Okay. Then you take your little stick and you start applying pressure. Now, don't worry about this yet. We're gonna use an X-Acto knife to trim everything into place. The thing with transfers is there's a whole lot of rubbing. Like your arm will fall off sometimes. It's that much. I like to be extra careful to make sure the transfer adheres fully. Don't like to rush this. I go over every single detail. Now, right here I'm having a problem because I didn't remove. Okay, so let's do something here. Let's get this baby off. I may have already messed it up. Yikes, I didn't think about that. Yep, I ruined the transfer. That's okay. I'm gonna try to slide this out from underneath carefully. Ah, I may just have saved it. Okay, so don't make that mistake, guys. Make sure your panels do not overlap while you're applying the transfer. Now I'm gonna use some tape to hold this up real quick because I need to go get a utility knife. So guys, this is a brief pause to let you know that I made a little whoops in that I did not film a section of 
where I actually cut with my utility knife the transfer around the little details of the drawer. But in the next video, you will see where there are some stripped parts and that is where I actually made the cuts. And I'm going to continue applying the transfer and you can see it all the way, the process till the end. So forgive me for that little lapse, but it's very easy. You just take an X-Acto knife or a utility knife, wherever you have a break in your furniture, like let's say the opening of a drawer, and you just take your utility knife and you cut the plastic of that transfer. It is super easy. So let's continue. Okay. Getting this little branch around there. I'm going to resume my pulling back. See, when, it, when you feel that it has some give where it's pulling back with a little resistance, that means you have to go back over and with your little stick and push on it some more. When it goes back smoothly, then everything's adhering. Just watch carefully both sides as you go so that none of your little pieces of the design stay on the plastic. You'll see, you'll feel it start to release. It'll get like kind of a layer of air on, in between both surfaces, the plastic and the furniture piece. And I said earlier, make sure it looks more vivid. It actually should look more translucent. That means it's getting the air in between the plastic and the actual transfer. Okay. Look at this, looking beautiful, love it. Oh wow, looking sweet, it's worth, it's worth all the work. this bouquet of flowers on there. These pretty branches. Really is a gorgeous transfer. Okay. It, you guys look at this beauty oh I'm gonna just, just be careful I missed the spot so you can always get your plastic and come back over it even after you've taken it all off it's all off you can go back over it. any areas you notice that are, might be sticking up a little bit just for precaution it's optional but I like to do that especially if I'm selling pieces I don't want pieces of the transfer to come off in somebody's home. This little bird head, he is struggling there. Where's my little, okay. So I'm gonna pull this drawer out. Wait, I'm gonna pull the drawer up a little and then I'm gonna get my screwdriver and push that head in there. Little birdie, you need to cooperate. Little redhead. Birdie. There we go. We need to get your head down. Find any little flat tools that you can get used to press, apply pressure around corners so that nothing is sticking out. Okay. You can also get like a sandpaper and distress your, your um, design of your transfer. You can distress your transfer minimally or a lot, depending on the look you want to go for. Let me pull this drawer out so you can see it in full alignment. Okay, there we go. Look at that, you guys. The bird is in between almost three edges. One, two, three. But it still looks intact. And this branch flows all the way over here. And everything is looking so beautiful with this backdrop. 
very artistic. So I'm gonna continue with the rest of the panels and I'll be back to show you more. I finally got all of the transfer on and it's looking really, really beautiful. I'm gonna do a couple more steps with painting and then I will show you how we're gonna finish this. Next, I'm going to be applying some of this chocolate swirl, this brown that I have also pre-mixed using the salt wash and I have made it extra thick. It's almost like a very thick pudding. And the reason I did that, I'm going to show you why, is because I want to cover up some of these imperfections way down here on the furniture. If you see right here, there are quite a few nicks. I even put wood filler, but I just wanna make add some texture and cover those up. Since we're creating a textured surface anyway it's going to be part of the character but i don't want to see all those big nicks there so basically what we're going to do now is we're going to take our mixture and i am going to use this thick chalk paint brush this round chalk paint brush and dab it into the mixture i created get everything nice and thick on there here's my furniture and all the nicks and I'm just going to kind of pound it a little bit just like that so not only are we adding a really pretty accent with the color kind of like framing out the bottom of this design of this picture we created with the birds but we are adding texture and covering up these imperfections. You could also leave them, but I thought they were a little too deep and I wanted to just go over them with some paint. Now, depending on how this looks after I'm done with the brown, I might leave it or I may come back over and lighten it with some white. Just going to continue working here and I'm going to also, so that looks really neat, but I'm going to use this brown all around the furniture piece, just a little bit sporadically to add some definition and some character. I do like the way the brown is adding another layer of style to this and character and age. So anywhere I have any nicks or imperfections or where I just wanna add a little bit more texture, more elevation, I just add the salt washed paint. That's why I love this salt wash. It's so fabulous to create a lot of character. Using the brush like this, by dabbing it up and down and using this round chalk paint brush, it's going to give you this effect, kind of a spongy effect and also an age distressed effect. Okay. So I'm going to continue working on this and I'll be back to show you how everything comes together. So this is what the furniture piece looks like after I applied the brown to make it look more aged and to try to cover up any nicks around the piece. And I really like what this additional color did in terms of character and dimension. It really just took it to another level. However, I think just for the aesthetic that I'm going for here, I might soften the brown tones up a little bit so that it's not such a dirty look and I might come back over it with a little bit more of the weathered white. So I'm just going to use a little bit of the weathered white with another brown chalk paint brush, dry brushing, no water involved. And in some parts, I'm just going to lighten up the brown. So, 
a little bit of the paint on here. There we go. Just a little bit. Let's see how this comes out. So I'm tapping, tapping, tapping. I don't want to completely cover the brown. Um, I'm also pulling down a little to make it a little more uh, thinned out. And I'm tapping in other parts to make it look more spotty and then I'm coming back over it, brushing it out. So that makes it a little less dark, a little bit smoky and another level of layer, uh, another layer for more definition. The more layers you add, as I always say in my tutorials, the more depth, the more dimension you're going to get. It's going to look more expressive. It's going to look bolder, deeper, the aesthetic. So just play with whatever look you like with your layers and your colors. I pick these colors because they match kind of the palette of the transfer. Already you can see how all of these efforts, they completely disguise any imperfections that were hidden underneath. Like that looks pretty awesome. I like all that variety and richness. I'm gonna do this a little bit more and I'll be back to show you how we do the hardware. I'm going to dress up this hardware by using Old Denim Metallic Wax as the base color. This is a beautiful sapphire blue. And I'm taking my cleaned hardware, I washed them off, and I'm simply going to rub on the metallic wax all over these knobs. And look how already it's transforming it into a beautiful, vibrant blue. And this wax is great for adhering to metal to really any surface so that's why you want to wear gloves if you do get it on your skin you can just wash it off with soap but i love the sheen it's giving it look how pretty these both look now i'm going to show you the end result with the blue on both of these knobs hi guys i'm back to let you know that i had another corrupt video interruption please forgive me for all these missing gaps in my tutorial but the next step that I am doing on the hardware is to simply add some more metallic wax. This one is called Silver Leaf and it's a pretty vibrant silver and I just add it in minimal spots just sporadically over the hardware. I'm going to show you what that looks like next. So now see how the silver is on there over the blue. It looks so pretty. I really like that contrast. And now I'm going to add one more color, this is Antique Gold Rub and Buff. It's another metallic wax, and I'm going to just put a little bit on my gloved finger and dab up and down all over the hardware, all over this knob to create just a little bit more style, a little bit more dimension, and I'm going to go heavy with the coverage so it creates a little bit of texture. And really just get creative with your colors on your hardware. I love working with these metallic waxes because they're really fast to work with. They dry really quickly and they're very durable. And I'm just kind of mimicking the style of layering on the furniture piece using other colors. This is just going to make one more level of a design statement. But look how cute this looks. I really like that look. Hi everyone, before I share with you the final reveal, I wanted to take a moment to share with you some exciting news. I am launching my very first course at nooksandbloom.com and this is gonna be different than anything I have on YouTube. It's an in-depth tutorial. We are going to be chalk paint blending, creating a vintage and distressed look using some really cool paint techniques and also some sanding techniques. And I'm going to be sharing with you everything from prepping a piece to finishing it with some of my best tips and tricks that I've learned over the years of having a furniture renovation business. So I have kept this course affordable so that everyone can enjoy it. 
and I hope that you will join me on this journey. Without further ado, here is the final presentation of the furniture piece we completed today. I did seal this with a clear finishing beeswax. And if you like this tutorial, be sure to subscribe so you can follow me for more fun projects.